So you just got your new classic mobility harness from us, but you're having a little trouble putting it together. Let me help you out in this quick video. Hi, my name's Casey. I'm the owner and creator of Canine Blueprint and I make all these harnesses by hand. Um, and this here is Kenobi, my service dog in training, who is going to help me today show you guys how to put these together. Um, I know my design is a little bit different than some of the other harnesses out there. Um, so you're gonna literally pull it out of the package and it's going to be wrapped up like this, all right? Wrapped up like this and it will also have the handle uh, with it if you ordered a classic um, or a semi-rigid handle or a um, Bravo style harness. Now, in my classic mobility harness line, they all are the same um, harness, basically. What changes is the attachments on it. So this is a red, this is our beautiful red color, by the way. It's gorgeous. And um, this is a alpha uh, setup. So we have our front D-rings for a guide handle and our um, double D-rings for a counterbalance handle. Um, Bravo has our rigid handle. Delta will not have these two rings on the front, just these two here. And then Echo has these two on the front as well as bunny loops um, for guiding. Uh, okay, so my assistant over here, um, Kenobi is sporting a 26 and a half girth currently, which makes him wear a medium small. Now he is a puppy, just a note, if you did order for a puppy um, or are planning to order for a puppy, I know this is kind of a pre-ordering, um, but uh, you want to pick the girth um, that is on the small end, all right? So closest to the small end of the measurement. If your dog's full grown, you want it um, as close to the middle as you can. As you notice when you look at my sizing chart, a lot of our sizes overlap. That's because we want to kind of get in the middle. That way you have a room either way, um, whether they lose weight um, or gain a little bit of weight, or if you have like a poodle or a really heavy coated dog where they uh, do change uh, sizes basically as their coat is trimmed or brushed out uh, during the summer and winter months. So we want to get close to the center as possible. Although if you're buying for a puppy, uh, to kind of get them used to a mobility style harness. Of course, we do not recommend, or should you, you should not uh, do any kind of mobility tasks on a growing puppy, it's not good for their bones. Uh, but we understand wanting to get them used to a, a mobility style harness or having a handle that might flop around on the back. Um, so uh, yes, if you're buying for a puppy, make sure it's on the bottom end of it. So. Uh, but for this fitting video, I did pick one that is literally the correct size for him right now. So you can guys can see a well-fitting harness. Um, so you're going to have your harness just like this. Uh, you can take the tag off. I do put tags on pre-made harnesses. So take the tag off and we're going to have these two pieces. You're going to grab your pup and you're going to grab your treats. Always good to have treats. A lot of people I know buy these harnesses for dogs that have become a little vest shy. Uh, because they are very light weight, um, they are very good for vest shy dogs. Feel free and do, if you do have a harness shy dog, to take your time with this. Use lots of good treats, keep it short. Um, but here Kenobi is no stranger to putting on gear and uh, he's just working for kibble right now, but feel free to crack out the good treats for this. Um, I do recommend while you are fitting your harness, especially for the first time, go ahead and remove their collar. That way there is nothing on their neck to get caught, especially if you're doing some desensitization, if your dog's a little uh, gear shy um, with new gear or just gear shy in general. So there we are, we're all prepped. We got our dog, we got our treats. Collars off. The next prep we're going to do is we're going to thread our harness. So we want to make sure that it looks like this. And we want to go ahead and thread through these loops 
or these slides, just the first set, all right? Probably don't want it that small. Um, but just like this. All right, got both sides here. It doesn't have to be perfect. We want it on the looser side, um, but they don't have to be perfectly even because we are going to try it on. So that is the first step, is you want to put it on like this, and uh, you can have a close up. This is the first uh, step here, thread the straps once. So that's what we're doing right now. Then go ahead and get your pupper. Come here, come on, good boy. And then we're just going to take our treats, and we're gonna get dressed, good boy. And I almost put this exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so uh, he is kind of twisted in here. I'm hoping we're getting in the frame. Uh, but we don't want our harness to be forward. So we don't want it to look like this. If it looks like that, these straps are way too tight. We want it to sit relaxed up and down, uh, perfectly uh, vertically on our dog. We don't want it tipped forward, so I could probably loosen it a little bit. And uh, when it's like this, where our tab's back here, we should be able to move it back and forth. Of course, if you're going, I would say go slow, look at it, make sure your dog's feeling good about it, feels very comfortable in the harness, check it out, maybe make some little adjustments. You're like, okay, that looks good. You're doing so good. We'll go ahead and take it off. And then this, when you kind of get her, your first initial fit, can you sit? Good boy. First initial fit, then uh, you'll go ahead and take it off and fold it in half here. Make sure you match this and then fold. The, and you can see here that this bottom part's off. It's not folded completely in half. Uh, so we want to kind of even these out. So because we know the overall circumference is where we want it to be, we're gonna take a little bit in on this side and a little bit out on that side, hopefully giving, keeping the same circumference, but making it all matched up and all centered. After we do that, we're gonna go ahead and put it back on. Good hubby, trust. Good boy. And we do want them standing. Good job. I'm gonna check our fit again. See if maybe we want a little bit loose or a little bit tighter um, and just kind of mess with it. But I'm pretty happy how this one's sitting right now. It maybe is a teeny bit forward, uh, but I think I like it right there. It feels like that fits really good because um, I can even scoot it up a little bit to make it more horizontal. So that's good, I like that. So once you're happy with that um, adjustment, what you can do and what you want to do is lock in these straps so they do not move. You're gonna take this back end. If you have a alpha or a echo, you're gonna go through the D-ring and then you're gonna go through that front part of that um, slide. And that is going to lock in this strap so it does not move or slip when you put any pressure on it. Um, and then you'll have a little bit extra. They usually stay pretty flat. If you have a lot extra, you can tuck it into the chest plate. Um, if you don't like it flapping around, you could take a little bit of electrical tape and tape it down or put a stitcher through two through it. Um, but you're gonna do that on both sides. So they are locked in place. All right, and so you are halfway there. Now we're going to take our gur strap. Now this uh, is also like exactly where it needs to be. Um, if I can buckle it. So you're gonna go ahead and buckle your gur strap. I can, apparently I can't put it together without looking. There we go. This is actually exactly where it needs to be. So come forward, good boy. 
So we want it to be uh, not super tight. We want it to be a little bit loose so I can fully put my hand under here. I can't really pull away too much. It would be snug to put two hands there, but I could put two hands there. Um, but not, oh, I guess I could get a fist in there. I wouldn't be able to get, wouldn't want it so loose that I could get more than like a tight fist. Uh, but a good amount there. So I like that, not too snug, but um, not super loose. So, <laughs> like I said, I kind of got it exactly where I need to be. But this adjusts like any kind of collar. So we have our adjustment point here and it just slides up and down. So there you go, you got your, your girth adjusted. Now the last part, which is the part that's not quite explained that thoroughly, on the card that I'm getting some questions on. Come here. We're almost done. This is our last part. Come on. Good boy. I know. You should get more treats, right? You're not getting paid enough. All right, so we're going to take our front strap here, and I'm hoping I have a good angle on this. So we have our front, uh, front strap here. This uh, piece of webbing, good boy. Um, is going to go underneath our girth strap, all right? So I'll call this the belly strap, and then this is our girth strap, and it's going to go underneath, in between the legs, underneath, and pull it out, okay? Now this one can be a little tricky to adjust. We don't want a ton of room in the front, but we don't want it super tight either because when they lay down, it's actually gonna tighten this up a little bit. So in order for our dogs to be comfortable when they're lying down, we want a little bit of room. He's done with this. <laughs> Come on, we're almost done. We're almost done. Come here. Good boy. Okay. Come on. Good boy. Maybe I should have done Austin instead. We're almost done. All right. So we're going to tuck it underneath and this might be hard to do on the dog so what you can do is kind of feel how tight it needs to be and then we can take it off and he's going to be almost at the bottom end because he's skinny are you skinny here you go go free so he's going to be at the bottom and the padding's pretty much tucked in and so I'm not going to use the strap keeper because it's going to be that small. Okay, I need you to go over here. Lay down. Good boy. So I'm just going to, I have the girth strap over it. I'm going to take this. I'm going to go up through it. And it's about right there, I think, is going to be good. This one is a little bit tighter, so you do want to kind of adjust on the first one versus threading it all the way through like we did with the shoulder straps. And then you could also go ahead and uh, test it here. I think we will go ahead and do that, but I think I got it right. All right, up. Good boy. I'm going to go ahead and take his leg up, stretch the harness down, and then... If I could do this. There we go. Yeah, that's that that's right. Alright, so you can see there's a little bit of room here, but it's not super big. And that way when he sits, good. It's not digging in at the top, it's not digging in. We want a little bit of room there. It's snug. You will you will see that it's snug, but it, we don't want it to like be cutting into him because then that's way too tight. But you can see there's a little bit of room here, but it's not super, and then down. And then when they lay down, that should be pretty much taken up. Um, this one's actually scooting forward on the bottom. So, yeah. Nice and loose all the way around. Make sure this harness is comfortable for him. And I think we are good with our settings, so up. Yes, good job. Oh. Let's go ahead and take this off. Okay, come here. 
There you go. Now this one, not a lot of uh, pressure goes on this one, so you don't have to lock it in. But of course I do recommend it, kind of keeps it out of the way. So again, same thing. You're going to skip this back one. You're gonna just loop around and go to the second one right there. Pull it through. And you can see this one's a little long. Um, if it really bugs them, you can cut it. But uh, one of the things about my harnesses is that they're super adjustable. Dress, good boy. And that is really important with mobility gear is that you get a really, really good fit. Comfortable fit, not too tight because that can create sores, but not too loose. So I'm just making sure it's kind of cut on the buckle down there or the slider, which can happen, which can happen, but you can see how it fits on him. Maybe, come here, good, wait, good job. So you can see how it's loose everywhere. It's comfortable for me to put my hand everywhere, but it's not, uh, it's not, it's like slopping over. Like it's pretty still, um, it's pretty stable. So it's not going to move on him if I put backwards pressure. It's not like going all the way up here or mega lifting the harness up, but it is comfortable and sized correctly. So I hope that helped. I hope that answers all your questions about fitting these harnesses and uh, getting them ready for some use. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope this answered any questions you might have. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below. I might remake this video to make it more clear if I wasn't um, in a certain part to make this video better. But I hope this helps you set up your harnesses if you had any question. Thank you for your order. Um, I really appreciate all the support I'm getting for my small business. I hope this piece of gear helps you as a team, you and your dog, your dog be more comfortable and able to do uh, the tasks that you need. Um, I, these dogs are absolutely amazing and just having the opportunity to make some great quality gear for you guys to help you guys is, is just awesome and I just love it. So thank you again for your purchase. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Again, I hope this answered any questions you might have. If not, message me. I'm free uh, to answer any questions. Thanks for watching. Bye!